Forces of the Water Cycle Forces of the Water Cycle While the sun is the primary driving force behind the water cycle, other forces impact the cycle too. These forces are gravity, the atmosphere, and land masses. These forces that influence the water cycle are constantly affecting the cycle in many ways we cannot see. Gravity's Impact on the Water Cycle As water is evaporated by the sun and lifted into the atmosphere, gravity pulls the water back to Earth in the form of precipitation. Gravity also causes the runoff to flow through rivers and streams back to the ocean. Along its way, gravity pulls against the water, eroding the Earth, cutting canyons, and transporting sediments. Solar Energy While solar energy influences all surface processes, its impact is not consistent because Earth is not a perfect sphere. The amount of sunlight and its influence depends on the angle of the Earth in relation to the Sun. Look at the map and notice that the areas around the equator receive the highest levels of solar energy. What causes the polar regions to be cooler than the equator? Convection Currents The uneven global heat distribution causes convection currents that attempt to equalize the heat distribution around the Earth. The heated air at the equator rises up and spreads north and south towards the poles. Convection Currents As water gradually cools, it sinks down in the polar regions and then flows across Earth's surface to the equator. There it heats up again and the convection current cycle is repeated. Coriolis Effect Since Earth is constantly rotating, the rotation affects the currents. The Coriolis Effect makes the northward flowing currents veer off course. The air currents are pushed to the right, in the direction of rotation. The air exchange between the equator and poles is classified into three circulation belts, westerlies, northeasterly trades, and southeasterly trades. Coriolis Effect Impact Air currents from the equator bring with them lots of moisture and thus there are a large quantity of clouds. These clouds lead to a lot of rainfall in the wet tropical environments found around the equator. As the currents travel to between 20 and 35 degrees latitude, they encounter warm and dry air masses. Coriolis Effect Impact In these drier regions, what type of environment do you predict will be there? Once the currents reach the poles, they again form cloud formations and thus precipitation. Moving air equals moving water. The movement of global air current is also the movement of water through the atmosphere and water cycle. Compared to atmospheric gases, water has a much higher heat capacity. As water is constantly traveling through the water cycle, it is releasing its absorbed heat. Moving air equals moving water. The heat from the sun that causes water to evaporate is put into the air when the water condenses into clouds and precipitates. The continuous evaporation and condensation cycle is a main way heat is transferred from Earth's surface to the atmosphere and in moving heat around the Earth. Moving air equals moving water. Summarized in this diagram below is the water cycle. It starts when water evaporates or turns from a liquid to a gas form, from the ocean storage or from the leaves of plants into the air or from other uh, storage like uh, the lake and then the water condenses to form clouds and then uh, the clouds release their precipitation uh, liquid water falling from the sky or uh, ice as snow and sleet it comes back down to the earth gets stored in the glaciers on top of mountains or in uh, lakes or percolates down to groundwater eventually reaching its way back into the ocean and starting the cycle again